Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Lise LeBlanc, therapist, author, and life coach. And today I'm talking about 10 things that will trigger a narcissist. And at the end of this video, I will explain why I'm sharing this information with you. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a quick moment to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. This really helps me personally, and it helps to get this information out to others. Okay, so number one is your indifference. This is a major trigger because narcissists thrive on attention and admiration. So when you're not giving them the amount or the type of attention that they desire, they feel ignored invisible, neglected, rejected, abandoned, worthless, and insignificant, which can lead to desperate and immature attempts to reestablish their sense of self-importance. And this can include things like tantrums, guilt tripping, gaslighting, and long silent treatments. And I'm not talking about a 30 minute break to cool down. I'm talking about not talking to you for days for reasons that don't match the situation at all. And one of the biggest mistakes you can make in this situation is trying to please and appease the narcissist because this only rewards their immature ways of trying to get their narcissistic needs met. Number two is giving them negative feedback. This is another thing that really triggers a narcissist. No matter how constructively you may try to communicate this feedback, it can still be devastating to a narcissist because it threatens their inflated self-image. They get very, very defensive or they shut down or lash out because they perceive your feedback as rejection and as an attack on them as a person. And so they feel justified in attacking you back um, and dismissing your feedback and dismissing you as a person. Number three is being outshined by someone else's success. Again, huge trigger for a narcissist, especially if they are experiencing problems or challenges in their own lives. It makes it even worse. But no matter what, someone else's success will make a narcissist feel small, diminished, insignificant, and inferior. So if you're praising another person, for example, um, for their accomplishments or whatever reason, it triggers deep feelings of inadequacy and envy in the narcissist. When they hear you say something positive about someone else, they take it as a negative comparison. And in their mind, they immediately jump to, oh, so you think they're better than me? And they typically respond to this by belittling the successful person, spreading false rumors or lies, um, or discrediting them by you know, attributing their achievement to luck, unfair advantages, or deceit, rather than acknowledging their hard work and their talent. Number four, when you do not provide enough recognition for a narcissist's minor actions or achievements, they feel deeply wounded. The lack of validation can cause significant emotional distress, which can lead to dramatic displays of emotion or constant complaints about how they are not appreciated and valued. They expect friends and family to constantly boost their ego and provide them with admiration and validation about how significant and unique and special they are. And when they don't get it, they feel worthless. Number five is confronting a narcissist about their deep-seated insecurities. Narcissists wear a mask to con conceal their vulnerabilities. But this facade is actually very fragile and they will work very hard to manipulate people who challenge their fragile ego. They do not want anyone, including themselves, to see the rejected parts of their psyche. So if you poke around at that stuff, it will lead to defensive or aggressive behavior. It's important to note that when a narcissist gets emotional, they are either trying to manipulate your emotions to advance their own agenda, or they themselves are in an extreme state of distress. However, they won't show fear. 
So like a child who does not have the tools to communicate their inner experience, they will instead throw a tantrum or find ways to project their feelings of vulnerability, deflect them, uh, shift blame onto others, and so on. Number six, when you don't meet the narcissist's expectations, they feel incredibly frustrated and deeply disappointed. With their black and white thinking, they immediately feel like you don't care about them. You don't care enough to do what they wanted. In their mind, they've done everything for you and they just can't believe that you are not meeting this simple expectation. And I'm sure you know by now that it's not possible to meet their unrealistic expectations because the goalposts are always moving. Their demands are always changing. So when you don't meet their high and unrealistic expectations, they take it very personally, becoming hostile, defensive, and usually threatening the security of the relationship. Number seven is when they realize that they can't control or manipulate you anymore. In order to feel any sense of emotional security, a narcissist needs to feel like they own you, like you're a possession. And so when they can't dominate you and you refuse to let them have all the power in the relationship, it leads to deep feelings of frustration and helplessness, which often leads to them doubling down on their manipulative tactics, often leading to more tantrums, more gaslighting, and taking a victim stance in the case of a covert narcissist. And again, threatening the relationship. If you do not react to their manipulative efforts, they may have a complete meltdown and try new tactics until you comply. But once they're convinced that they can no longer control you, you should expect to be discarded. If not fully, then at least psychologically. To watch my video about these seven types of narcissistic discards, please click on the link above. Number eight, narcissists will get triggered anytime you challenge their authority and their opinions. And if you can prove them wrong, it often leads to aggressive reactions, even when the topic you're arguing about is trivial. They interpret challenges to their opinion as a direct attack on their character, and you can expect them to respond with hostility or contempt. And if you challenge them in front of others, it can be much, much worse as they will feel publicly humiliated. And this is particularly devastating for a narcissist because it damages their carefully constructed self-image and leads to feelings of shame. Obviously, no one wants to be publicly humiliated, but to a narcissist, this is their worst nightmare. It's intolerable and they can go to great lengths to seek revenge and to retaliate against those who they perceive have humiliated them in public. Number nine, narcissists expect special treatment and privileges. And so when they are not receiving any special privileges, it diminishes their sense of self-worth, their sense of superiority and entitlement, making them feel unjustly deprived. This can lead to them making accusations of being treated unfairly, not getting what they deserve, and lashing out to try to reclaim their lost status by whatever means necessary. Number 10 is experiencing rejection or abandonment. This is something that does hurt a narcissist. You may have been led to believe that they don't care because they've moved on so quickly to their new source of supply and probably plastered their newfound happiness all over social media. But in reality, if you ended the relationship, they're not taking your rejection lightly, especially once they realize you're truly done with them. So if you cut off contact and never look back, you actually forget about them and you move on with your life. You recover and find peace and happiness. That will genuinely upset a narcissist because even if they don't want you back, they still can't handle being rejected by someone they thought they owned. So there you have it, 10 things that can trigger a narcissist. But I will say that my purpose in sharing this information 
is not for you to use it to manipulate, retaliate, harm, or abuse the narcissist in your life. And if this is how you choose to use this information, I would suggest that you question your own integrity. And I'd encourage you to consider setting stronger boundaries and seeking support from a professional who specializes in narcissistic abuse, who can help you understand what's going on, break free, and preserve your psychological well-being in the meantime. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more insightful content. Thank you for watching.